Alright, well, well, before I say anything, Muta King has confirmed that there are a top six. He said we need to stop this top five nonsense. I yeah. respect his skill. Everybody else should too. It's finally confirmed. Welcome. Thank you, but I'm not I'm not happy until every aspect of godhood is like torn away and there's only one god and that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that, that, that's how I feel. <laughs> like, as long as the era of five gods or six gods is still a thing, then I'm used one of six. Why would I settle for that? This man wants to be the omniscient and the omnipotent. He wants to be above all of them. Now, mm. wow, wow. But it's clear today, mm. Mm. or at least right now, I'm not there yet. I'm not the best yet. I feel like, honestly, I feel like had I beat a Music King, I would have taken Grand Finals. No problem. I beat Hunger Box in a money match pretty soundly, and if I ha had been playing well, I had no doubt that I would take uh, the tournament. Like, not versus Hungry Box, but versus Music King, I wasn't playing bad. That's not my problem. I, I don't feel like I, like I underperformed or like I played so much worse than I should have. Mm. I just feel like I'm not ready for the Moth matchup yet. Okay. And. So everyone's gonna say like, oh, one guy left, why didn't you practice Marth? And here's my thing. After Beast, I went home. I got sick, but I wasn't that sick, but I took Monday to rest because I came home at like six in the morning. Mm -hmm. Tuesday, I tried to practice, went to my local Smash weekly, and they had random teams. And I had, had nothing to practice. Wednesday, I get some practice with uh, my roommate Pop, and that's it. And I had to leave like Wednesday night. Wow. So I want, I really wanted to study music. King. I really wanted to, but I had no chance. I didn't have any like internet when I was here. Yeah. And I know that like I'm happy that I got to play him because now I have all the data I need. For wow. Events. Okay. So this man, even though he may have lost the battle, at least he has the information. He definitely yeah. collected the information needed so that if you face off against him, at Apex, per chance, you'll have a better opportunity of taking him out. You know, Music King actually said that he felt as if both of you were playing sloppy in that set, but yeah. you yourself say that you don't think you were playing sloppy, you just well, didn't have the practice. I, I think like playing sloppy is kind of how I do against Marth right now. Like mm -hmm. That's my general level. Like If this is my level, I, I was playing around here. I could have been playing here, but you don't. You can't expect yourself to be playing like godlike every time. Mm -hmm. If you have to play Garlic to win a set, then you're it's basically like hit or miss. I respect that, I respect that. So I, I knew Mewtwo King is the guy who always, always thinks he's playing bad or everyone's playing bad because he knows and I know too that in friendlies when we're both warmed up, it can look so much more beautiful than that. Way better, yeah, yeah. But that's not how tournaments work. Except when our model plays Fox for some reason. Dude, <sighs> what in the world was that? Like I, we might as well start taking it straight to bracket. Um your match versus Armada was that set. Like first, <laughs> first I was about uh, to talk I, uh, about I Beast. I honestly feel like uh. that set against Armada is. Uh, this is gonna sound about it. But I honestly feel like to date that is the most hype set that has ever been played. Ooh, and just an all melee. I I honestly feel so. That match what had me at the edge of my seat. I couldn't believe Phantom it. Phantom jab. Phantom jab. The spacing though. All right, so Can't believe it. Do you want to go through my bracket? Yeah, yeah. Um, you could just like talk about anybody notable that you All thought right. was worth mentioning, and probably uh, even gave you a challenge. All right. I definitely feel like Whistrope is worth mentioning. Like, he took a game of me. Uh, I kind of threw it away. I had three stocks, and I got game three times. <laughs> uh, and I even had the kill, but I just like charged up smash on the edge while Falcon was recovering, mm -hmm. barely missed, and he jumps up. Reverse nares to me and like games me three times. And then I four stock him again. Oh my three. god. <laughs> I was so angry. But he definitely he's definitely an open comer. Yes. Um, if I had any advice to him is that he keeps playing the same way too much. He's really good at doing it. Mm. So it pays off usually, but he he plays too similar to every single game. 
Like, he didn't adjust at all, and that's why I could force knock him in game three. Wow. And, all right, so I beat him 3-1. I go up, go up against Plop. Um, I try to find some <laughs> uh, some sounds to practice with, so I s sit down with Hugs, and I play one match, and I, and I talk, start talking to him about Plop, and I just notice that Plop is right behind me. Oh! <laughs> looking at me. Dude, that always happens, too. Oh, my God. And later, Hugs has to go play s -Fed. Uh I sit down and play with the Samus CPU because I don't know Samus. There's no good Samuses. And I see Pop just comes up and like watches me. And this is not an excuse, but I really, really wanted to play Pop. I, I played him several games, but he refused to play uh, Samus. Of course. That's he, pl he just played Cheek. I'm like, play Samus. I, wa I want to learn. But I think he, he and I both knew that his best shot was to have the matchup like a knowledge on his side. Um, we'll, we'll see. Like, I definitely feel like I would have beaten him in a best of five, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, he played really well. I, I will say that he definitely got he got a lot of combos and a lot of hard punishes, and that is really hard to do with Samus. Like, yeah, you do it with Marth, you do it with Fal Falco. That's autopilot. If you do it with Samus, that's a, like. Down smash and then read and then down to and then read like it's constant it's constant reads and he got them all on me. He was really spot on with those. Yeah. Like, was it you that was getting the up throw up airs on him? Yeah, um, that's just because like you can avoid them, but sometimes it's really hard. Like ah. jumping away with some slow jump isn't really an option. So he basically has to guess like, uh, is he gonna nair or is he gonna jump away? And if he's gonna jump away, I, I have to like go past where he is right now to get him. Yeah. Or if he's gonna air, and I usually predict that he was gonna air, and I guess right. That's why it worked. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> Alright, so I lost against him, and I wasn't that solid. Like, I definitely fe felt like I kind of threw it away, and I got into my head too much when I was in the lead. Mm -hmm. Like, I have this, I'm just gonna play super safe, and that doesn't really work in melee. Like, one stock is not that big of a lead. You can't just, like, start playing bad or easy because you have a one stock lead. That's not how it works. And I started realizing that. And I played against MACD, and that was actually almost one stock, like mid percent first game, which I had not expected it to. I, I, I expected to like destroy him. Oof. And then uh, second game, I think was like two or one stock low percent. Wasn't that close, but MACD definitely surprised me a bit. He plays the matchup very differently, but still functional. All right, and then I played Axe. That was a crazy set. Oh my god. I didn't know if you were going to be able to make it out of there, but you started making those adjustments right after like the first game. Yeah, uh, I definitely didn't realize that Axe had gotten even faster, and keeping him down was even harder. And he, he had a great punish game. My DI is honestly not up to par with the rest of my skills because I don't play good enough, good plays enough. Uh -huh. So I did get combo too hard. I will admit that. But he is great at keep like racing the pace and keeping you to it. And but I, fe I felt like except for the FOD match where I like play sloppy, sloppy. I felt like after the second game, like mid second game, I'm like, all right, I know how it works. I just have to execute it. That's it. And that's how I felt like I did. And but it was still really close. And I'm definitely looking forward to playing him again. Of course. Yeah. I think like Axe is such an amazing player. You know, to shine with that kind of character. Yeah. Like nobody else can do it like he does, man. Yeah. Mm. And then it was down to Armada, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and what was going through your mind as the set progressed? Because things just got crazy. Like, like, like what in your first mind? game? Mm. I, I felt feel like I played amazing. I have never beaten Armada's Peach that badly. I was like a three stock, I think. That and was scary. I think I, like, I knew he wasn't feeling on point, but I think that. I beat him so badly that he gave up on Peach. He did. Like, after that, he he realized there was no coming back. Even, like, you have to realize this. I three-stocked him, and then I, like, three or two-stocked his Fox on Dreamline like, really solidly, and he still didn't believe in his Peach. Like, yeah. he still believed in Fox over Peach. Yeah, like, um, not to cut you off, but uh, during the Beast 5 interview, he did say that he really felt like Fox, even in PAL, has yeah. the advantage, and that if push comes to f shove, he'll go to Fox. So yeah. like you said, game three, I was like, okay, he's going to go back to Peach because that was just... Yeah. Like... <laughs> but he didn't. 
I really admire that he he could stick to Fox. Like, how do you decide which character? Most people always go with the safe card, but he was uh, is like, no, I'm going to go Fox even harder. Mm -hmm. And I will say that I felt like, all right, I beat his Fox. I can take it calm. Like, sure, he four stocked me and he played amazing, but there's also half of it is still my the fact that I did not play as I should have. I, I played way too safe. And if you play too safe in Fox Otis, if you don't have the confidence to go for it, then you're gonna get run over. And that is exactly what I got. <laughs> I got so run over, and it took me to last stock on Battlefield before I realized that I have to go back. I have to push him back. Yeah. And once I started doing that, I could feel him crumbling. Like, he plays Fox really well when he's on top of you and he, when he's running around. But once you get him pinned down, then he's just like any other fox. Yep, starts panicking and making yeah. uh, you know the wrong decisions. Yeah, like rolling and like everyone does that, and you have to. But that is still like Amala's biggest problem. That like, when he can't just like autopilot you, just like run past you. We even saw an example yeah. of that when he was fighting Hungry Box when he just did that panic side B, and Hungry Box just got the rest. Yeah, and that yeah. shocked me. I was exactly. like, wow. Exactly. Like. His fox is good, but he still has a long way to go, and he will take time. And I don't think he's gonna play fox against most people. Not even me, I think. But if he wants to, he probably has to up his clutch with fox. Of course, of course. But yeah, I I'm really proud of myself because I've gotten a lot better at clutching it out, like through the years. And most most sets where it's close, I usually win. Mm. And I guess Battlefield game 5 versus Amada is no different. That was probably my biggest comeback ever. And yeah. I did it versus arguably the one of the best players in the world. And I have like half memories of that because I was so focused. And that was just an amazing set. Like I can't even wait to like just look back and watch how things like just <laughs> happen you know you guys are crazy Ugh. to see the comeback that you made just blew me out of my mind yeah but after armada let me see yeah and then i played west balls ah, and okay. first game both of us weren't really feeling it mm. uh we were half and half but i was like more on pace and I, I i got a couple games i got the edge cards and i won that game i think two stock and then on fd he started hi hitting everything Way before I like, I was not ready mm -hmm. to uh, play perfectly yet. And on FD, you really have to against Falco. He's one hit and you're dead. That's, That's true. it. And I dropped chain grabs and stuff, but in in the end, he just outplay me neutral and just converted it to really big combos. But then on Dream again, I started really like getting it into like a good flow, and I just like kept up. Uh, pressuring him and he didn't really get an, any of that like crazy west ball speed going like for the entire rest of the set once I got those quick stocks on uh, Dreamland I just kept it up he didn't really get control ever again mm -hmm. and then on Battlefield uh, I think I just clutched it out honestly uh, it was looking kind of bad in the first stock and then he SD'd and after that he his mindset just crumbled yeah I could you couldn't even like yeah. start telling in a player's face you know when they're yeah. playing. I definitely think like mm. if if we're talking gods, yeah, that it sucks that he SD, but I also SD game one battlefield. Yep. And I still won that, and I was down three stocks versus one versus Amada. Getting coming back from an SD or a bad play is just something you have to learn. It's really rough. It's gonna take a lot of time to learn it, but if you want to be a top player, you have to do it. That's course. what I feel. It's definitely a mark of a top player to be clutch, you know, yeah. in those times where people will think, oh, he's already down to his last stock, he's finished. Yeah. Mm. If, if I would make any argument for myself being a god, it's that while I don't have the experience that everyone else has, because I've been playing the game honestly like half half the time that everyone else has in the top five or, or top six, uh, it's that I have the clutch of the top six. Like, if it's close, I usually win, even against gods who have the potential to win. Mm -hmm. Where most of the time you see a top six player play against someone and it's really close last stock and they always clutch it out like that top player clutch and 
I, I, I feel like I have that part down. I just need to get get the game going now. That's it. I guess who? Music Inc. Chilling. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah. Gamer wants to know. Gamer wants to know what's the set count gonna be against ch um, Chilling. The people want to know. I, I don't need to say anything. Everyone knows what I'm going to say, and it's gonna be 5-0. <laughs> that that's how it's gonna be. Like, I wish. I really wish he would have more of a shot so I could t set him up as a goal and I practiced really hard. I wish that was the case. $100 is not a lot of money, but as it is now, $100 compared to a 15000 or more prize pot, why should I waste my time practicing against him? I'm going to beat him anyway. He takes a game? Sure, he takes a game. He loses his color by the end of the day anyway. Like, I don't I don't care about Chillin. That's a... He only cares about me. You go into a stream. I, I did that once for fun. The, the no left and so in a mode where you have a stop sign over my face. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just, oh, I hope you beat left and no one's ever saying, oh, I hope you win Apex Shillin. You wonder why? <laughs> that That's how it is. I mean, Ow. I'm not even trying to sh firing a shot, but he, both me and he knows that he could study me all day and maybe in the worst case scenario, he wins, but he has no shot at winning Apex whatsoever, and he, and he will probably never have a shot at winning a major, considering how long he's play, playing and won absolutely nothing. But that's just how it is. I'm happy that you give it, me the money, but please practice for Apex instead of me, because you're probably going to lose to another Samus. Alright, <laughs> 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 alright, alright. Alright, alright. Alrighty. So let's let's just talk about my last set. I lost the music king 3-1. Hmm. Uh, I definitely feel like I could have won on FD. And had I won on FD, I feel like the tournament could have been mine. Hmm. But that simply wasn't the case. Uh his punish game is so amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was about to touch on. Like I, I did some hmm. amazing Smash DIs honestly, and he still managed to kill me off a single hit so many times. And his edge guarding is just impeccable. Like there was a, there was one time where he did a combo, and TK Breezy was basically questioning why you when you're getting comboed on FD, you just let him get you with repeated up airs to a neutral air. Yeah. Um, is there a reason why? I think you were like like FD is like this, and you were like on you know like this is FD, and you were like on this area, and you just kept getting up aired, up aired into a neutral air instead of the eyeing off stage. Is there a reason? Um, for that? honestly, because. You you get into the mix-up. If you're off stage, mm -hmm. you can either go for like a weak nair, and you, if you die away, you, then you die basically, or you could do, go for the tipper fair or like a weak nair, uh, weak fair, and he will get a downer. Exactly. Or if you're diing the up, uh, uppers to the side, uh, lower percent, he gets a free tipper, mm -hmm. and if you get that tipper, you're over 100 percent, and you're so far off stage that you basically have a really, really slim chance of like making it back. Which is why it's just best yeah. to take the nair then. Yeah, yeah, just take the nair. You can maybe smash the eye. At least you can uh, have your double jump still, and you can kind of like have some mix up. I still feel like that Marth matchup is is bad for Fox. Mm. I still feel like Marth wins the matchup, especially on FD, of course. Uh, but I definitely don't feel like it's possible. I, one thing I kind of realized was that it looked like you started to realize how reliant Muta King is on Dash Dance Grab. I don't know if you saw it, but he would just do it over and over again. Over and over, mm. and, I, I, and I did not whiff punish him well enough. Mm. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, I'm not gonna jump, but NTSC, NTSC, Marth, Fox is so different. Like, I, ha I would never have realized. Like, I played some guy to warm up just before, and he was like, "Why don't you do wave shine grab? Why do you just do up smash?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, oh my god, <laughs> why, why do I do up smash? Up smash is so much harder." Than leads you to, to nothing and I feel like I just have to learn that matchup in NTSC I play yeah. it sometimes with B but honestly I just beat him by being the better player not by winning the matchup <laughs> alright 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 well okay Gamer is trying to kick us out he's Wait. joking okay cool he's joking well Apex man Apex yeah dude Apex Oh um, man! Like everyone has one up. Music King, except for Music King. Why? 
that like the fact that Hungry Box won <laughs> makes it so interesting for Apex. I have won over Mango and Armada, and <laughs> Armada has obviously won a lot of tournaments. Mango has won a lot of tournaments. PP won the last Apex. Hungry Box won here, and Music King still like he gets second place at everything. I think he got the the uh, Pacific Northwest qualifier. That was a uh, oh yeah yeah that's true yeah that's about yeah yeah. I, 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 I just hope that Music King focus on Melee. Like, he's probably not going to be, but I really hope. He's an amazing player, and I would really love to be, beat him at, at his best. Of course. So that no one says, like, oh, you beat him because he was playing badly. Like, do you realize how hard it is to lose to a player with everyone, that everyone says, oh, he's not taking Melee seriously? Like, That's the worst. It hurts. Of course. <laughs> but... Uh, I honestly feel like Mewtwo King is one thing, and then Mewtwo King versus Fox is a completely different thing. He could destroy most Foxes in his sleep. Yeah, he's been practicing those chain grabs <laughs> for a long time. But circling back to what you said, since he doesn't really play that much, if you lose to him, you look bad. And if you beat him, you still look bad, because regardless, he doesn't really play. But at the end of the day, I think... I mean, he definitely shows that he still has yeah, what it he takes. He definitely shows that. Yeah. I mean, he still beat everyone else really soundly, and I, I he still pull amazing stuff against me. Mm. Can't really. W I can't wait for Apex, man. Like, yeah. Especially because Mango's gonna be there as well, and PP, who we and didn't see for a long time. I, I think I, I. This is gonna sound bad, but I think PP's gonna get buffed. I. I. I I'm. <laughs> You know what? I like I love PP too, but yeah, I love PP. PP is probably my other favorite player. Like, it's between him and Mango in the top six to play against. Yeah, but everyone's sliding up so quickly. He's gonna have to. He's gonna have to honestly gimmick like that. The fact that no one's preparing against him is probably his best shot because through raw skill, I don't see him winning. Mm. Yeah, I mean we. He's been studying a lot of us, though. Yeah, so yeah. He's definitely studying a lot. Yeah. You I <laughs> when I when I stream for like six hours, I shut off the stream, and there PP just goes like, "Bye, Leffen," and he hasn't said a word the entire stream. <laughs> I'm like, "No, no, he's studying me." Yep, always. But everybody. Mm -hmm. PP, there's more to melee than just watching people, and I think that you're gonna have to watch out for a lot of people. I think that. People could lose to 20 people, maybe like potentially lose to 20 people, right. and because he's been out like PP's style studying people works really well when he's good enough to just with no studying be the other everyone but a top 10 maybe. Mm -hmm. But if you're starting to rank up in numbers like tw top 20 can beat you, then it's gonna be like you get potentially lose to everyone at, like really quickly because let's just gonna keep increasing if you don't go to tournaments he has to go out there and get that yeah actual experience that exposure I really wish yeah. he would come here me that too would, but I'm happy that he's gonna come back for Apex me too me I'm too. just I'm just happy that Mel is gonna be at Apex a thousand three hundred a thousand and thirty seven seven yeah. yeah that's big we broke records man and we got fifty thousand now and like wow. eight like more and more people are gonna are able to live off Smash. I'm like at the point where I could maybe, mm -hmm. but I still prefer to like have work and like have a career. Nice. But it's it's amazing to me that I could, if I wanted to, I could just play melee. I don't even have a sponsor, honestly. Yep. And I could still play through Twitch and through tournaments. That's how big the game has gotten. You don't need you don't need to rely on anyone other than like your following and your tournaments. And that's complete. That's that's bonkers. It is. It's crazy how much the scene has changed. <laughs> no. I was like, what's the game doing? But in, in, in any event, they're about to shut down. So um, thank you so much, guys. Apex 2015. Thank you for watching. Everyone yeah. who's new to Melee, mm -hmm. check out Smash Europe. That's a new uh, Europe site. Uh, check out Smash Bros. Google Advanced How to Play. Our Smash Bros. All those. If this is your first time watching Melee, or if you come from Smash 4, Please give it a shot. Mm -hmm. I know it's rough in the beginning. It's like that for everyone. But you're gonna lose and have the most fun you've ever had. Of course. Like that's that's how I feel. I smile when I play this game, man. <laughs> Win or lose. You yeah. know, it's fun. It's a crazy roller coaster ride, but it's 
you know, you keep writing over and over again. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, I, I can't wait to see what you're going to bring to the table at Apex. All right. It's going to be amazing. Make sure to follow Leffen on uh, oh, yeah. Twitch, right? Yeah, Twitch. Uh, I, I stream like four times a day. Yep. Uh, four times a day, no, four times a week mm. uh, th these days. And it's at twitch.tv slash LFFN, which is Leffen without any threes or E's, basically. That's it. And I'm sure people are, are going to link it in the chat. I I try I try to uh, stream a lot uh, and just like interact with my chat, but honestly, for Apex, it's gonna be a lot of focus on me. Mm. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let my sit boys down. Not again. He has your back, guys. You supported him. He's gonna make sure to reciprocate in turn. Yeah, but yeah dude, I can't wait. Like, you're gonna be hanging out on the East Coast. No, I'm going home. What? Tom yep. Tomorrow. You have work. Yeah, work and wow. rest. Wow. Wow. Trooper. Okay. Well, you know what? I'm not going to keep you any longer because you're going to need your rest, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Leffin. And thank congratulations, man. Thank you for commentating. Thank you, VG Bootcamp, for streaming. Mm. Thank you, Paragon, for hosting an event. While not perfect, it was still amazing for first event. Yeah. And everything turned out great. Well, we're out, guys. Take care Peace. and make sure to follow VG Bootcamp. Melee? <laughs> right? For life, baby. We out.